Hey, folks, this is On the Home Front. My name is John Murphy. Glad to have you with us. You might be uh, here watching us live on WILI. We're also on YouTube. The radio station has a YouTube channel now for all of the block programs Monday through Friday from 5 to 6. Uh, this program is here every Wednesday, 5 to 6 live. We're also rebroadcast on WECS up at Eastern. And our program is, of course, here for you as a resource, AM 1400 and 95.3 FM. What we're trying to do is to do more than a talk show, but we're trying to use our studio and our guests to generate stories that they can recycle and use for their own promotions to help them with fundraising or other promotions that they might be able to use our media support for. So the key is to connect here through the show. Today we're going to look at two great organizations I've had on for many years. We're going to start with the Wyndham Community Food Network, and then after a short break we'll look at CLIC, the commercially licensed cooperative uh, kitchen, which is a growing business accelerator for, a new, uh, for new businesses involved with food and the food economy. So we're going to begin, though, with uh, the Wyndham Community Food Network, and I'm happy to welcome back on the program again Sydney Clement, the coordinator. Welcome back, Sydney. Hi, thank you for having me. It's, it's always, always a pleasure. You, in the room. you yeah. bet. She's been there for five years doing the work to coordinate their year-round programs. And for the last several years, Vanya is with us today. She is their community farmer. So welcome aboard. It's good to have you in the studio as Thank well. You. Thank you for having me here. Welcome. This is a great story. And the reason why they're here today is April 1st is a day you should mark down. It's their eighth annual, I believe. Eighth annual. Yep. Know Your Farmer Fair. Uh, you know, so tell us all about the day and what your hopes are. Yeah, so it'll be held Saturday, April 1st from 11 to 2 at right. the Willowantic uh, Senior and Community Center. Right. Um, we're really excited to be back in downtown Willowantic this oh, year. Oh, super. Yeah, um, we're hoping that we can have a lot of people come and then spill out onto Main Street and visit some of the businesses. There's a lot of cool things going on down here. Um, at the event itself, uh, it is an educational market around... Um, CSAs and what kind of farms have offerings in the area. Um, it's a little bit of a farmer's market. We will have a kids corner um, with kids activities. Um, we're also going to be giving out a bunch of free seeds for people to start their own gardens and grow their own food. Um, and the kinds of farmers that we have are super diverse from across the region. We have 33 farmers signed up currently, but we oh, that's excellent. Yeah, we think that number will grow even more. Um, but there'll be honey. Uh, their vegetables, fruit, meat, eggs, um, and you can come and find out which farmers live in your town. This isn't specific to Wyndham farmers, it's really the whole eastern region. Right. Um, so there'll be farmers from Putnam or Eastford, um, New London there, and you can come and find out who's growing things in your backyard. You know, that's one of the really cool things is that the seasons connect everybody. And the whole idea of markets really goes away when you think about local distribution. The fact that we're a half an hour or so from any of these places is really cool. And the fact that you can get their stuff locally here, you know why. People are learning more and more how many you know, benefits there are economically, physically, environmentally. Uh, so, you know, you've gone to 33 local farmers. What do you sense has been their overall well-being now with COVID. Food is still there. We need food. That has not gone away. Uh, how are they doing overall from your sense of these folks when they sign up? Yeah, I mean, talking about as a whole, like yeah. there was that early, like, year two years into covid where there was a lot of the grocery stores look, were pretty scary oh, yeah. and so there That's was true. we saw a huge surge in people wanting to sign up for csas or go to farmers markets um as covid has started to die down i think we're starting to see more people go back to like the old ways of the convenience of going to the grocery store um and it's not that farmers are super suffering but they i think that surge has died down a little bit and we're trying to continue to cultivate that idea that you should continue to support your farmers and uh, make their businesses viable, basically. Right. This is the time when they're getting everything ready for the fall harvest. That's part of what the fair is all about, is to meet them at that vital stage. Sometimes you sign up ahead of time for a CSA. I'm sure some of the people will be doing that, right? The yeah. whole idea. Maybe you could talk about what a CSA is and how that's how you plan ahead for a whole season of fresh local food way ahead of time. Yeah, so yeah. there's CSA stands for Community Supported Agriculture, and it's basically like getting a subscription service. And so once a week, you'll go and pick up a box full of food that your farmer has grown. And so by signing up for a CSA in the, like, the winter time is really beneficial for the farmers because you pay this upfront fee and that is the money the farmer is going to use to buy the seeds, to start hiring employees, to make sure all the food gets into the ground and uh, kind of 
offset some of that upfront cost that comes with farming a lot and keep them, uh, make it so that they have food to grow during the summer and to provide for you. Yeah. So Vanya, let me bring you in right away now. As a community farmer, uh, how do you support this effort? In what way do you tie it into the growing season or you know, working with other farmers? Yeah, so the way I support this event is by bringing our local organization in, Grow Wyndham, and our Wyndham Youth Corps. Our Wyndham Youth Corps focuses on food access and also teaching other community members how to grow their own food. They cultivate resources and also show up to just pretty much support anybody else who would like to grow. Um, we also partner with a lot of other local farmers to support them in their efforts. So right now we're actually doing a series of videos where we're getting to interview farmers. We have cool projects or initiatives that they would like to highlight. And so if any farmers out there would like to have more social media presence or online presence, they can actually reach out to Grow Wyndham at growwyndham.com. And we'll be making a video for folks, so we'll come to you. We really want to highlight the work that they're doing. And we'll play, be playing some of those videos at the Know Your Farmer Fair this year, actually. Could you mention a little bit now that we're coming into the spring season soon, how our local youth tie into school life and what they do with some of the activities they do with the youth corps and how it's tied into their life in nice ways that complement? Yeah, so yeah. right now we have a varying uh, series of things that they get to do to learn and cultivate their growing skills. So we actually have a hydroponic system at our office so they can learn how to grow hydroponically inside. Um, but they're also starting to go back to the garden. So after school, we're at the gardens from 3 to 5, if weather permits. Right. Uh, right. And we'll be doing workshops there or starting to prep our gardens to grow food. Uh, and all of our food goes back to the community table program that the Wyndham Community Food Network actually runs, which is a kind of collective community CSA, where a lot of local farmers and community partners come and donate food and produce to distribute back into um, Willimantic families' houses. Yeah. By the way, I just want to mention, if you're listening to us on the radio, we're talking today with Vanya and Sydney Clement from the Wyndham Community Food Network. Uh, on, the, on the fair on April 1st, you're also going to be looking to bring in musicians to add a little bit to the day and vendors, I believe. So can you talk a little bit about how you're planning ahead for that in terms of volunteers? And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a few weeks away. It's going to come up quick, I know. Yeah. Uh, I think we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. I, uh, that vendors and musicians and stuff we're looking for for veggie stock uh, later uh, in the summer. Um, we try and keep the farmer fair to strictly farmers there you um, go. Okay. to kind of keep the message like really targeted about the local food and have them have a space and not have to uh, kind of compete with a, bother, a bunch of other inputs going on. Right. There will be food trucks though um, oh. at the Know Your Farmer Fair. They will be out in the parking lot at Jilson. Uh, Jay's Trays, which is actually one of the next guests, will also That's be right. there uh, yeah. selling food. Yeah. yeah, yeah. you know, it's great to have Click here with Grow Wyndham and, and also uh, the Food Network because they all complement very well a common economy with people interacting in different ways. At the consumer level, obviously, that's everyday life, but then you can grow, you can get credit, all kinds of things. And we'll get into Click a little bit later. Uh, you've had four years now to work in this area, but I know you've been working with food longer than that. Yeah. What have you noticed with the kids or anything in four years about their interest level or the things that they're curious about and maybe how they got through COVID with all those extra impacts? Uh, so, yeah, so yeah. the first year of COVID was actually really amazing. Um, I would say it was one of the most motivated years that our youth had because they were so, you know, bound to their home and they were just dying to get out and do something. So I got a surge of a lot of young um, adults and young youth volunteering and actually um, I saw this big change where a lot of um, young folks really really wanted to learn how to cultivate their own food how to create their own resources locally and how to support their community um, they saw a lot of folks struggling like so close to home and they became very motivated so right now I actually have a whole like long list of uh, young adults who actually come and volunteer with me regularly to support our growing season, to support our hydroponics, to do just workshops. So even if they're not part of the Wyndham Youth Corps and they can't commit to coming two to three days a week, they still drop in like every other week or so um, to cultivate their skills. And it's just been really amazing to see this new generation um, be so motivated, but also have so many resources. Um, so many things they have access to, like our website or our Instagram, they're constantly interacting on there, sending us messages or sharing what we have. So even doing that is um, really amazing on their part to step up and support their community at such young ages. 
Yeah, well, sharing these stories is really cool because that gets to be contagious. Mm -hmm. When you see it in its everyday life, it doesn't have to go away. It's not because of an event. It's part of the everyday, and you translate that. That's really neat. Uh, now, also, we have a few minutes left. I want to ask Sydney to talk about how you're using the website a little bit. You've done some work on it. Uh, uh, the website uh, is windhamfood.org. Jot that one down because you can track this and also veggie stock that I just mentioned by mistake before. Windhamfood.org. Uh, tell us about that and how you're using the web to connect to people when advertising is hard to come by and you know there's a lot of people that are still learning about your work. Uh, how's the web helping you? Uh, yeah, so over the winter we redid our website um, and we've tried to keep have it as like a resource so we've done a lot of surveying um, created a lot of resource guides so making sure that that's all up on our website and people can go and access it and find out about the local food uh, we're also working on more of a our social media has been pretty lacking uh, that's a personal like my skill kind of thing and so Vanya has actually been working with us to create a bigger social media campaign education campaign uh, which I think you should yeah yeah please. so we just launched our campaign food as a right we believe that folks should have the right to food that is not only um, accessible but also something that is sustainable and viable so it not only supports their health and their well-being but also the prosperity of their local economy and their community members so we'll be sharing um, local initiatives and projects that uh, do just that and also how other folks can support those local initiatives and projects to uplift uh, that, that initiative. Are you hearing from kids in the region about how they're doing with uh, food at schools? Some of the school programs are kind of shaky right now and some towns seem to be doing better than others. Do you have any sense of the overall nutrition of young people and how it ties into their academic life? I mean, their nutrition plays a big role, just like anybody's day-to-day -day life. Um, I think our, our youth are very self-aware enough to know that some of the resources and stuff that they have at school are lacking. You know, they're not blind and they eat it every day. Um, but there's a lot of awesome other organizations out there, even regionally, like Fresh New London and Grote Hartford, who do, are doing a lot of um, political movements, um, trying to get more access to food. Uh, not only you know locally but also for everybody in the state um, so recently I think we just actually passed in Connecticut free meals for all schools that sounds right, yeah, yeah? Um, so during I heard about that campaign but I didn't track it it's called meals for all yeah so oh, okay. during the pandemic um, they pretty much made it so all schools had to give um, youth free meals but that's then right yeah so but then in the recent year it had ended and so the current campaign was pushing to bring that back because we saw it as such a um crucial thing for our for yeah. our young youth yeah there was news about that i think even in february so that's in the session right now you think because they have the long session this year until mm -hmm. may i think there's a whole lot of things being debated so mm -hmm. that's in the mix that's great to know yeah uh, so when you look at the organizations are there any volunteer needs you have throughout the year? Are there any ways people can get involved in different aspects? Somebody may not want to really work the land as much. They may want to help in other ways. And some of that invisible work is very valuable. Mm -hmm. And uh, each person can make a big difference with a little bit here and there. Yeah. So where are those kinds of needs people might be able to help with? So for us, we have a yeah. lot of, of folks that we could use to help with either social media, but also with community surveying. A lot of the times when we're actually working the land or working long days, we really don't have the time to just, you know, go around and survey people or, you know, um, show up to different places where we usually can't be. Um, so doing community surveying or supporting with community workshops. So if anybody has any knowledge or skills on anything related to just community engagement, that's always welcome. We always like to build more support around how we can actually collaborate and create mutually um, beneficial relationships. In addition to the surveying too, uh, building off of that, the outreach is really important for our organizations. We are 
have been popping up at a bunch of community events um, uh -huh. at like Thir Thursday, Hot Fest, Downtown Country Fair, sure. uh, running Waste Not Tents, which is sorting trash and composting uh, the food scraps over at Click with the intent that the compost is then used back in community gardens and given to community growers, um, kind of creating this like closed loop cycle within our food system. And we're always looking for people to come help us sort trash at these <laughs> events. It doesn't sound that glamorous, but I promise it's really fun. Yeah. Um, um, and a lot of the times we do have surveys and stuff and educational materials that we're also distributing as we're doing yeah. this. Because it's a local circuit that's not that far apart from the different stations. It really isn't that bad. Yeah. Now, I know from other shows you've talked about community surveys, and we haven't talked about that a lot. Could, we have a couple minutes to go. Could you briefly say what kind of information you're trying to collect and how you use it to understand the situation of our food economy and food security and the research sometimes is original and hard to find right yeah. it's your own unique stuff can you share some of that and what kind of stories you're telling from that yeah so from a farmer's perspective we're trying to really collect what people want to eat what people want grown locally and what can be grown locally mm -hmm. um, especially in our region a lot of folks think that there is certain foods that we can't grow here too much of, like peppers, tomatillos, but we can. Um, and it's just culturally relevant food to our population that we could be growing here more of, like cilantro, and that there's a lot of consumption of. So there's a market that can be possibly made here um, if we actually collected the right amount of data and we knew there was enough people to support that market. You know, that's a perfect way to apply what they do in larger development. For example, in Wyndham Willimantic, they look at how many cars. Mm -hmm. What's the foot traffic, right? How many people are walking? How many cars are going by? To make sure there's enough interest so that it's not well intended, but not enough activity to make it work, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And it's so great to see in the last couple of years how many small food businesses have come up. How many restaurants yeah. are taking the plunge, you know? Yeah. So that's really encouraging stuff. So before we go, I want to mention one more time these two web Websites, if you want to follow with the work of Vanya and Sydney Clements, uh, windomfood.org and growwindom.com. So I wish you a great spring ahead and success with all your events, especially the uh, Know Your Farmer Fair on April 1st. And we'll have you back later on in May and we'll talk more about the veggie stock later deeper into spring. Yeah, yeah, that would be okay. great. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, great yeah. to see you both. Take care. Yeah. All righty, well, you hang in there. We're on the home front here. We're at the halfway point. We'll take a short break and come back and look at Click. Stay with us. Okay, I think uh, we're back live here on the home front. My name is John Murphy. Very happy to be here with you on Wednesdays from 5 to 6. Our programs are videotaped for YouTube. WILI has a YouTube channel. And if you go there, all the 5 to 6 shows are posted for you to access anytime 24-7. So it's great to have some live radio for people that can have fun with us in the studio each week. But then we capture it so they can have their message get out anytime through YouTube. And we're going to keep the community focus now and shift over from, you know, Grow Wyndham and the Community Food Network work to click it's been here for many years it's a business incubator it's uh, the commercially licensed cooperative kitchen and I'm very happy to have Lee Duffy back in the studio again she's the executive director she's been there now for four years in that capacity welcome to the program it's great to have you on board thanks so good to be here okay good to have you on board now yeah, part of why we're having her here today with the guest is they're having a program coming up on the 19th with Owen Taylor and he's going to join us in a few minutes to talk about a certain aspect of training and seeds and growing but in the studio also uh, we have Jessica Riera and she is a member business at Click. It's uh, Jay's Food Truck. Welcome to the studio. Thank you for having you me. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> and we're going to have plenty of time in this show to talk about your story as an entrepreneur and how you're working with Click to get a launching pad to get started. Oh, it's been a good launching pad so far. <laughs> I've heard so many good stories now. But right now there's a special event coming up on the 19th, and I want Lee to be able to set the stage, and then we'll have Owen join us on the phone shortly. So, Lee, take it away. Okay. So, um... Owen Taylor is actually a local man who grew up in Wyndham, and his mom, Stephanie Smith, is on the Click board, right. and so we're fortunate to have that connection, and Owen is going to be in town this weekend for several speaking engagements and has graciously offered to come to Click on March 19th right. to talk about some very important um, food justice around seed keeping, and it's fascinating if nobody has ever heard this kind of discussion and talk, I suggest you come. Um, and
and I'll let Owen really talk to you about what his his focus is going to be on Sunday. I know in the last couple of decades, uh, the way farmers have had uh, less access to seeds of their own control, if they buy seeds, they're not necessarily regenerative. Uh, you have to come back every year. And the idea of self-sustaining basic things that were normal for hundreds of years are now influenced by all these business models. And they work in some places maybe, but they're obviously not working everywhere. Mm -hmm. So it'd be nice to have Owen with us. I think uh, we have him with us now. So I'm we'll here. jump in. Uh, I heard some exciting noise in my ear very much. We'll have to edit that out of the show. Uh, Owen, are you with us? Owen Taylor. I am here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you just fine. We're very happy to have you. you know, welcome back to Willimantic, Owen. It's good to have you back here in town. Oh, thank you so much. It's such a, a privilege and honor to come back and speak in my hometown. I'm really looking forward to it. So tell us about your hopes for this uh, Sunday, the 19th at 1 o'clock, and what you're going to do with the time you have to help people think about uh, agriculture and growing things in a little different frame. Oh, sure. Well, you know, when I left Willimantic, I, I started working with food justice organizations in a few different places uh, over the last two decades. And, you know, more recently, I have started a seed company in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania for the last six years focused on culturally important seeds. So working with farmers who, you know, historically haven't had good access to land in this country, who come from communities where there wasn't great food access to mm -hmm. healthy food in their communities. And so we work with farmers like them, really from all corners of the world, who are preserving their traditional foods through saving seeds. And so you were mentioning how difficult it can be to find good quality seeds these days, and that's especially true if you're an immigrant or a refugee or from a cultural community who's not often represented in seed company catalogs. And so we're trying to provide that and also provide mentorship to those farmers in how to produce um, high quality seeds and then get a good income from selling them to people from their kind of shared background. And so I'll be talking on Sunday about my history working within communities around food and environmental justice issues, you know, access to healthy food, access to land, um, but also focusing on how do we incorporate, you know, growing our ancestral seeds, our traditional seeds, and keeping them around in the face of kind of a globalized food system. You know, the shrinking availability of so many varieties of heirloom seeds throughout the world. I should mention, too, folks, if you want to learn more about Owen's work, the company is True Love Seeds, and 50% uh, of each packet goes back to the farmer who grew it. So it's a really very strong relationship uh, of support for the long term, so it's sustainable. It's a long-term relationship, hopefully. Uh, Owen, there's a phrase you used I was curious about that you can maybe touch on is culturally important seed crops. Uh, I guess that might vary region to region around the country, but what makes something culturally important? Yes, well, that is the question we ask each of the growers. We work with 70 growers around the country, uh, and we ask them, what seed tells your story? What seed is the food of your homeland, wherever that may be? We, Like I said, we work with many farmers who are recent immigrants or refugees. Right. Uh, we work with a lot of African-American farmers who have come up from the South or who are still in the South. And, and really people from every corner. I mean, I focus on Southern Italian varieties and Irish varieties. Uh, and so that's what I mean by culturally important, like getting to know our traditional foods through the agriculture, through seed saving. And for many people, that link has not been broken. And for many people we work with, it's, a, it's an act of rediscovery um, because of assimilation into to whatever region we're in now. And so when I talk about culturally important seeds, you know, a lot of our customers come to our catalog because they're, they're trying to find, you know, that particular bean from Kenya or that particular tomato from Naples, uh -huh. you know, and they can't seem to find it in other catalogs. And we're, we're hoping that they will be able to find it with us and that the farmer that grew it, like you said, will be from that place as well and will be the one benefiting financially from selling those seeds. And also the one best um, suited to, to tending those crops to begin with. They know what to look for. They know what it should taste like. They know how it should grow. Um, so we're really trying to close the loop and, and build a seed company that benefits farmers and also the people who are seeking out the seeds.
Right. And when people match the seed to the climate and the soil and the pH and the acid levels and these things, then you can have something that can regenerate over time and you can keep it every year. That's the whole idea you're talking about, right? Exactly. A lot of the people who come looking for seeds from us would otherwise be relying on bringing them from other countries, which is not always safe or legal or even appropriate to this climate. And so we are offering seeds that were grown here in the U.S., we tell all of, you know, on the website, we say where it was grown, which town and, and, and state. Um, and so people can be shopping with that in mind. Like, oh, this was grown in Lebanon, Connecticut at Tobacco Road Farm. It will grow well over here in Wyndham, you know. So that's the kind of thing we're trying to educate right. people about. That's real stuff. That's great. So I want to give the website, too, is clickwillomanic.com is where you can sign up and learn more about the workshop we're talking about with Owen and all their other programs. Well, uh, Lee, is there anything else about this Sunday the 19th you want to talk about that afternoon? It starts at 1 o'clock. Uh, I would just say that there's a $15 donation okay. um, because we are very excited to have Owen come out and sure. have this conversation. I don't know that it has happened in this area in quite a while. And I don't remember the time or the date, Owen, but I know you're speaking the day before at Eastern as well. Oh, yes. Actually, Monday at noon in the Science Building, uh, I think it's room 301 at noon, and that is open to the public with a seed swap following it at 1. Oh, that's great. That's the first day back after spring break here at Eastern, so that's a good time for that. That's uh, that's Monday at noon at Eastern. Great. Super. Well, Owen, thanks for your good work. I'm glad you're with us today. I wish you great success with your work, and give my best to your mom. I know, Stephanie, you haven't talked to her for a long time. Give her a thumbs up for me, would you? Oh, great. Yes, will do. Thank you for having me on. Okay, Appreciate good luck it. this weekend. Safe travels to you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, now we can take off our Captain Video helmets here, <laughs> and we're done with this. Imagine that we're doing sports play-by-play. You'll know these guys have helmets all the time. (laughs) That's all right. There's a lot more going on. Click is a center that's growing lots of businesses, including one that our guest Vanya is doing. Uh, I'm sorry, Jessica. And it's called Jay's Food Truck. So can you talk about how you went to Click and became a member and how they gave you a chance to start with something that you just couldn't do at home on your own? Yes, uh, that part. Uh, We would all like to do it from home. but um, Right. You know, coming to Click, it's actually kind of, it's been very fun, and it's happened so fast, but in such a good way. Uh, You know, when we first found Click, um, it was during COVID, so it was kind of really hard to um, get in there. I I think it was swapping management at that point as well. Um, So, you know, it was just kind of like a broken communication. And once we finally got in the door and were able to, like, meet and become a part of it, you know, we were very lost. We were seeking help. And they helped us in every direction. Um, they helped with our licensing and made that super easy for us. They gave us, you know, a place to store our stuff. Um, even in the beginning when we didn't have clientele ourselves, you know, they had people that they were referring us to. Um, and, you know, they were they throw their own events and stuff like that. So we were popping up just with a tent and tables and steam wells. And, you know, we were serving kind of that type of style in the beginning. Um, and then uh, everyone heard of Jay's Trays. Um, you know, in the beginning, I had to figure out how I was going to reach out to people and people who are going to be willing to, you know, throw money at me for their big events or trust me to cater their events. And it's like the best way to do that is just, you know, end of selling to individuals first. So, you know, at that point we were doing trays um, and getting out there and, you know, we were at up to 80, 90 trays just in the days that we were doing them. And then, you know, we went into the events and catering and we were fortunate to after being a a member for a year that we were able to get into our food trailer, which is what we're in now. Um, and, And that's been fun. And I'm learning more and more even just about what Click has to offer. And I'm still getting pulled in so many directions, you know, from them. And, you know, they just... You know, they always say it's about the people you know, and they're so community-based, and they just have so many resources that you don't understand or can't find just by Googling something, you know. That's it's, right. They're the knowledge behind this business, and honestly, you know, any questions that we've had, no matter who we've asked in that business, you know, they've always just helped us get one step closer to where we wanted to be, and, you know, it's just been, it's been great, and, you know, we tease going all over the place because we travel very far and everything. Yep. And we work with other health districts and, you know, they tease about, you know, driving far and, you know, and everything like that. But it's like we don't want to leave 
where we are because we yeah. just the help that we've been giving and I know they're growing and it's great to see a business grow and yeah. you know we're comfortable where we are too because growth is always scary but it's just they're more than just a community like it's there's a small nick of us it's family you know they've got waiting lists which is great because it's just going to continue growing and what they do is they give people the opportunity to really strive for what they want to do and you know it's just the progress has been a lot quicker than we expected and if it wasn't for click you know and finding them and getting into them who yeah. knows you know what point in our business we would be at right now yeah basic things like safe serve training you know how to legally sell and prepare food the right way you know listening to you is There's making me right hungry no. this shows live <laughs> i'm getting hungry here with this uh, ask her what they make uh, you want to get that hungry. was next, actually. Go right ahead now. What is your specialty? Where do you play the most with food? So we like to consider it comfort street food. Um, I am a huge fan of food and food trucks of myself, and you know. But there's a community here. People love trucks. Well, that is that that That's is true. Yeah. And and you know it's even though you can get some of the food on food trucks at a restaurant, it's just the atmosphere is different. You know, it's a different style of food. It's made fresh. It's made by that person for a reason and the menu they want. It's not like a list of ingredients where you kind of whatever. It's like people who want to eat food and enjoy food coming up to food trucks and trying something on somebody's menu is very compliment. When, you know, you go to a restaurant, there's modifications. You don't want this. You don't want that. In the food truck world, there's so much more trust from the people who are coming to you and it feels good to be able to cook what you want to do um, and for people to just try it and not care to you know toss it around and make it kind of like simple so right. our Philly cheesesteak egg rolls I mean I used to roll maybe like 15 orders at an event and now my fingers can't keep up I I'll mean an order right now. We, I was gonna say, we sell I'm out dying. of those a lot um, and those are our empanadas because they're you know everyone loves fried food everyone loves finger food but I mean we do um, our version of the taco to be competitive is we do like a crunchy taco quesadilla and I house make a sour cream and house make all our sauces and seasoning so everything we do it's just all about the flavor right. um, I, I'm one of those where if anything drops off what you're eating and you can individually eat an ingredient every ingredient is gonna just be blow your mind it's not just going to be a tomato that falls off it's going to taste like a really good tomato because it's got it got hit with love and seasoning and sauces and it's 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 fun you're getting me very excited for third thursday yeah i am ready and we are actually normally right there right there right here outside the window <laughs> outside so the window i will bring my utensils sounds good i got some of those on the truck there so you might not even need them okay you think of everything don't you, you? Got, we it's try like tra it's like click training you, you see? think of everything <laughs> Now, you know, something else, Lee, is happening there is that they've gotten a grant to do a major facility upgrade to build up the whole business side. And you've got some more news to share, so we have some more time. Why don't you give the good news? Sure. So um, one of the things when Click started was to start with the small micro-business uh, incubator program because right. the building we moved into had a kitchen. It was a Knights of Columbus. And that's the part of the building and the program you know seven eight years ago that we really started with and that has grown uh, quite significantly yeah. so this past year and a half we've been focusing on our farmers um, because they are the other uh, population of folks click was created to support <clears throat> so because of our work with the farmers um, we have talked to farmers farmers are already at click doing value-added products we have six farmers three of them have food trucks um, one of the things we know about farmers is they need a place to process food. Right. And in eastern Connecticut, the closest thing is really nowhere. It's New Haven is the closest or Massachusetts. If you're a small or medium-sized farmer, because you have to have minimum batches to process food sure, when you're like taking somewhere. Like, like printing anything like that. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so they were missing out because they are small, medium-sized farmers that didn't always have those batch minimums, and they had to travel pretty far, so it wasn't very economically feasible. So Click is there to support whatever part of the food system we need to support. And so uh, that means we are going to go ahead and create a small batch processing program at Click for these folks. And that requires us to do some renovation inside. Sure. Um, <clears throat> which is what we are doing right now and we started that process with a New England Food Vision prize of, of $200,000 which is about supporting food networks um, 
And then we are going to be running for the next two years looking for the rest of the $2 million to make this happen. But we have a lot of support from USDA, from Department of Ag, because they see us as we are the food hub in eastern Connecticut. They've been good to the region <clears throat> for a long time. They have been. That's yeah. true. And yeah. we have That's 80 right. to 100 farmers in eastern Connecticut that need support. Um, and as uh, Sydney said in the previous conversation, um, CSAs are good and uh, yeah. buying directly from the farmer is good, but they need markets. And so in this processing space, Click will also provide a market for them by purchasing their goods and creating our own products to sell to schools and restaurants and organizations. Or they can rent the space themselves, as is our model at Click, right. to create their own products that they could sell retail or wholesale. So it's great stuff, big stuff, and uh, currently we have 30 food businesses operating over there. And i got to say this about Jay's. We can help you all you want, but if you don't get in there and do the work, it's not yeah. going to happen. And that these guys are on fire. I'll tell you, they are on fire. They have so much energy, and they are doing the work. Because if you don't get out there and talk about yourself, it's not going to happen. And I, the, right now, they are the folks we get most of the food call, the calls about at vending events. And you know, the thing that, that I hear that's most special is that that's the engine between loving your work and making a livelihood is they're not in conflict. Right. So many times people are stuck with work just really for a financial need short term, but they always think, well, there's something else I'd rather do, mm -hmm. and here you go, and you're making that happen. That's part of what you know. You folks get to see once in a while. We, I would say that's a big motivator for people yeah. that yeah. sell food, make food. That's the whole thing. Yeah. I mean, a lot of our folks have come from um, food businesses they ran out of their home, and because they ma love making the food, and they and then <clears throat> we try to get them into Click to help expand their market and license them. And they come with that love of their food and that knowledge of their food. What you need help with is the bu bureaucratic crazy around getting licensed. Right. And then the other thing that we do that's really important is we've sort of taken on, we have 12 food trucks out of Click. You, Moodus Barbecue down the road is one of ours. There's Twelve a, food trucks? Yeah. That's a cable TV show. That's right a, there. We could make our own. I oh, would say yeah. truck, That's truck a cable right TV there. show right there. <laughs> I love it. it. Thank you for that oh, fundraiser right okay, there. There you go. Sure. Could we make $2 million off that? I don't well, know. We might. Um, but the other thing that we do, what, what I appreciated Jessica saying is, we also do the vending applications and everything for Third Thursday for the Hop Fest. So if you want to vend, you come through us. And that's how we also help our vendors make sure they're part of what's going on in the community. Because we yeah. are the people that do the coordinating for it. Yeah. Because that also allows us to help people to try to use compostable goods. Because we buy them at cost at click and then we try to get you to buy them as a vendor given that you know, Will Manick is working on sustainability and zero That's waste. Right. So we're also pushing the composting component, if we can, with the vendors as well. They're so. trying that in Mansfield, too, with their events, compostable, you know, dinnerware, that kind of stuff, too. Yep. So it all goes back to get reused, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You know, something else I've noticed over the years is, you know, we are bombarded by ads from the pharmaceutical companies to deal with digestive problems in the system. And you wonder, well, if you want to treat the cause of those symptoms besides making the gas go away, it's like, well, then you think about, well, I guess it has to do with what I eat. And people are trying to rethink food. And then they think about going to the local grocery store. Where does the food come from? How fresh is it? How much more would I pay to have this within 50 miles and not 2,000 miles, mm -hmm. and this way the town keeps its money local. You're always trying, talking about keeping the money local, right? That's yeah. where farmers, that's their margin. Can you talk about that's their margin? Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, people talk about the fact that, you know, sometimes buying local seems more expensive. Um, if you go to our food co-op, sometimes people will say, oh, why is it a little more expensive in here and there? Part of the reason is you're getting a much more quality and better product because it's coming down the road from tobacco farms or wherever it's coming from, and you're getting it at a very full nutritional value versus the, the food that's coming from you. from. And it also comes many times with less packaging. That's right. Which is a big thing. If we start thinking about composting in an environment, lots of packaging is bad. It's not good for the environment. So you're you're buying a head of lettuce that has no packaging lots of times. Um, and so 
you're also supporting farmers. Our farmers are sometimes many of our low-income people in, in our state. Yeah. Um, and so you talk about a bang for your buck. You're helping a family quite often survive and who is at the same time producing local, fresh, nutritious food for you. Yeah. I know we've had guests with some restaurants that are trying to match their menus to locally grown foods seasonally. So they're trying to deal. Sometimes they charge a bit more for those ingredients, but they're part of that economic chain, right? Yeah. And they're trying to include it in their offerings when they can. Or for you, the best ingredients that you have available for the menu items that you're working on, right. how can that be locally done too, right? right? So it's a big circuit. Now we have just a few minutes left before we close. I just want to mention, if you're listening to us on the radio, we're speaking with Lee Duffy the executive director at Click, uh, and also Jessica Riera. She is a member uh, of business at Click. Uh, it's Jay's Food Truck. Now, a quick thing about the website, Click Willimantic. Uh You're working on this all the time. Uh, there's lots of programs you do throughout the year. Can you talk about the things people could find out about uh, to follow up on your comments yeah. today? Um, so if you want to find out what we're doing for classes, we also have uh, cultural cooking classes, which is part of our social justice programming, of which True Love right. Seeds is. Right, you mentioned that, yeah. It's a free, a free class. You come, we have somebody, oftentimes one of our vendors who is from, has a different uh, ethnic food background. They come, they cook, and then we all get to eat together and talk and share. They share some of their experience, their stories. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful moment. We we average about 20 people at each class. You don't have you sign up. But there's no cost to it you. It always smells good when there's something going <clears> on <throat> because it's in yeah. the front kitchen. It's, oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah. It's the whole good food. Lot can smell good. Yeah. And then yeah. accompanying that on the opposite week is a discussion on racism in the food industry that our board uh, facilitates with uh, Phoebe Godfrey, where we walk through. Uh, the history of racism in the food industry, where it still is happening. We have guest speakers. Vanya has been a guest speaker as a, a local farmer uh, of color, and they share information about um, the whole system and how it has not changed and how it has changed. So if that's something you don't understand when you hear, it's a, it's a discussion opportunity to hear some people talk about it. Again, remembering that Click actually started as a social justice organization and we continue to do that um, but you can find all our classes on the website where we are working on doing is you can't find our vendors on the website yet but that is going to happen within the next month or two where you could wow. actually go on click look under members and then you can connect to Jay's trays and order do what you want to do that's coming down the road but you can find everything upcoming in terms of events at click on the website right now, did I hear you uh, correctly? Uh, is there a waiting list now for people that want to join? Uh, I'm not quite sure what uh, I heard from Jessica. Is that right? <laughs> she is right. You're smiling. <laughs> I'm only smiling yeah, because, you're both smiling. Smiling. <laughs> because we, we never, never really thought we'd get there. Yeah. Sorry, I'm falling okay. off my chair. Oh, well. Um, She's so excited. She <laughs> fell off her chair. <laughs> Growth, yeah. Hell's yeah, a pocket. I'm super excited. <laughs> there you um, go. It's it's a puzzle trying to run a commercial kitchen. People don't get it. They think you just sign up, use the space. But there's a <laughs> levels of do you need storage? How much kitchen time do you need? And so we're constantly our kitchen manager Denise, who is fabulous, is constantly trying to figure out how to fit everybody in everywhere. Right. And so for the first time, we do have a waiting list where we cannot unless you're somebody that comes in and doesn't need any storage, doesn't need to wash anything, which is rare. Um, we we really can't fit you in. Um, but that means basically what we tell folks, if you're interested, um, give us a call in a couple months, just check in, say, how's it going? I'm so-and-so, and then we'll let you know where we stand. Um, because sometimes people will disappear and we'll have openings, and sometimes mm -hmm. four will disappear at the same time. Right. It's a very volatile, unpredictable, un unpredictable. entrepreneurial unknowns. Right? Very much so, and we yeah. try to manage right. it as, as best we can. But I would always say if you have some interest, one of the things Denise does that's fabulous is she'll at least have a conversation with you yeah. to kind of set you in the right direction or maybe say, hey, you might not have to come to Click. You might be able to do this out of the house. Here's how you do that. How many hours a week on average, depending on the time of year, are you doing work in there for your membership time? Oh, I'm there a lot. They yeah. see me a lot. Okay. <laughs> um, especially now, event season's picking up. So, I right. mean, we're there a High lot. Demand. You know, we 
kind of got a little bit more smarter with the way we do things. You know, in the beginning we were busting our butts before events and trying to do everything then and then you know going over there after being running around forever now we kind of have it where you know we go in a couple of times a month so we are giving other people the opportunity to we rent it for a good length of hours we do sure. the bulk of our things and then we just kind of do our filler stuff right. and fresh produce on the trailer but I mean other than that they see us pulling in and out of there and we do storage I'm always in there inventory in and out but I'm yeah. I am there pretty often you know, the thing that I got before we go, that this is years ago with Phoebe, is the goal was to say it's a small, a small business. You can never control your income, but you can control your expenses. Most people can never afford to have a legal kitchen in their home where you could legally sell stuff. And you're never going to use it 24-7 anyway. You might be a small operator that uses 20 hours a month. I don't know, 15 hours a month. I'm sure you have different levels, but the idea is what you need, you integrate. And so you have a common resource, and it's small-scaled, so people mm -hmm. have a chance to not be afraid. You can really give it a shot. That's the fun part for you. Yeah, and what's really yeah. also critical is... Uh, 80% of food businesses fail within the second yeah, year. Yeah. So, all right, you tried it. It didn't work. You didn't buy the farm, the house. Yeah. You, you spent some money, but you didn't build the kitchen. You didn't build, take loans out to make the restaurant. You tried it, and it didn't work. And so that's a value that Click offers, is you can walk away from it, and you haven't lost a whole lot. Okay. Well, I want to thank our guests again for joining us today. The program is this Sunday, the 19th, with Owen Taylor at Click and also the website, clickwillamanic.com. We'll see you next week for the next edition of On the Home Front. If you want to get involved, the email is john at humanartsmedia.com. We'll see you next time.